All right, let's go to the typing zone. Yeah, the the tricky thing for oh. me is monitoring your Kennedy. stream without bringing the audio into my audio. Art. That's what I struggle with. Infinite. It's like I want to put it on, but bring I think the audio no into my end. audio. Yep. There's oh, bring the, always a new bleeding in all the time. Do. There's <laughs> nothing that can stop you except death. There's always some something to discover behind every corner under every rug behind every um pizza crust there is a mystery or maybe it's plain but you see with but you see plain things whoops plain things we can connect imaginary links which also contributes to conspiracy uh, theories because people are just so dang creative use them wisely friends love duck <laughs> all right let's go to Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Hello. Hi, Doc. Hi. How are you? Um, hmm. Let me think about this for a second. Uh, I'm great. It's good to be here. Valo, good to meet you. Thank you for um, coming on to my podcast. Happy to be here. Hi, Amani Misko, Lord Helmet, Lemonade on Mars. I see uh, you. <laughs> that should be better. Hey, Becku. All right, for those who uh, don't have a visual right now, listening on Spotify or on another platform, it is really better if you experience this with a visual, so you should go over to YouTube and check this out there. Anyway. Yeah. Um, how, how are you, Duck? You, you said you were doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I don't, you might hear a, a little toot here and there. People are um, doing some toots. I noticed they're on um, the chat on our channel and making toots happen on this, <laughs> which is kind nice. of funny. Good touch. Um, Senior Pancake is the culprit. He's, he ah. likes to prank while I'm interviewing. Um, so uh, where, oh, where was it that you reside? I'm in Canada, uh, I'm in Ontario. Ontario. Hello, Canada. Ontario. Hello. Um. <laughs> Senior you got pancake. fans down I here. You got fans all over the place. That, yeah, it's a, I'm pleased as punch. Um, it's good to have fans anywhere. Uh, France, UK, uh, Australia, um, you, you name it. There's almost people anywhere, everywhere. There's almost um, people everywhere and anywhere, yes. <laughs> I think so, anyway. But... um. You, you oh, and Tom, to... Tom's here, by the way. Oh, Tom's hi, Tom. here, too. Where are you? Oh, thanks, Doug. <laughs> hi, Tom. Thanks for the intro. Hi, Valo. How are how, you? How are, how are, how, well, I'm, I'm good. I've got this new angle right here that you're not used to, just so I can look you in the, the face more um, instead of just being like, you know, like this, you know, or whatever. Neat. But, yeah. I like <laughs> it. Thanks. Yeah. I'm I'm doing good. Duck's doing good. Uh, thanks for inviting us on your podcast, and happy to to chat. Yeah, glad um, to have you here. Yeah, thank you. So let's uh, let's get rolling a little bit here. I wanted to ask you and Duck, what are some of your uh -huh. favorite cartoons? Uh, favorite cartoons. Uh, well. I would say that I grew up on, you know, a, a lot of the Nickelodeon staples, um, you know, uh, Nicktoons, Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, um, uh, you know, uh, Doug, that that whole '90s, early '90s era 90s vibe, of animation, yeah. and then, um, you know, there were some, you know, the like. Uh, 
Looney Tunes and uh, just the regular cartoons you kind of on like random channels. Like uh, the um, we have this channel. We had this channel USA. And I remember they would show a bunch of cartoons like Mr. T cart, the Mr. T cartoon. I don't know if you ever watched that show. Yeah, no, I've seen it. Um, and, you know, Thundercats and uh, what have you. Um, what else? Did I watch? Uh, Heathcliff, um, He-Man. Actually, my parents w- weren't that cool with me watching He-Man because, well, my mom thought it anything with magic in it kind of made her feel a little nervous because yeah. uh, I grew up in a, uh, like a Christian, uh, uh, conservative household. But, um, but, um, I think they, they, they're cool with it now, but, um, <laughs> um, but besides that, uh, in the nineties, do you remember, did you watch MTV much, uh, at the time in the nineties? Uh, no, I watched there, MTV as it was starting to go out of style actually. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> well, in the 90s, there was this show called Liquid Television uh, that was like this kind of edgy animated showcase of these really short, bizarre snippets of... A lot of them were actually shorts made by artists all over, well, I don't know, the world. I, I, I can't remember how many places, but um, but they were they were sort of scary um can we cool with the toots no <laughs> oh oh i know why it's doing that it's doing the toot every 30 seconds because if someone else doesn't say anything here um not that just it's 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 not your fault uh people it was that um there's a bug in my code where if you do a toot and then no one says anything it will keep tooting every 30 seconds <laughs> so that's what was happening so it's it's fine just uh, but anyways, um, the, so liquid television was cool and scary. Uh, but you know, when you're a kid, um, when you see things, it's so poignant. And I remember seeing a lot of really eclectic and strange animated techniques on that show. And that was also around the time of Beavis and Butthead. And Beavis and Butthead was uh, another show my parents wouldn't let me watch, but I would catch it at my friend's house that their parents were like more chill about what their kids watch and stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't yeah, get you know, to watch it when I was a kid, but I had Beavis and Butthead on DVD now. So it's like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I, I loved Beavis and Butthead, but I liked the storytelling more than the music video parts. Um, yeah. So I kind of got a little bored with the, anim- the music video. Cause I didn't usually use the, know, know the music. So I was just kind of like, okay, I don't get the references here, but, um, Someone mentioned Aeon Flux in the com- comments, which is part of um, Liquid Television. It was just this really creepy, okay. really detailed animation of this lady. Like it begins with like a fly getting stuck in, her in a, eyelid. an eyelid. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, that was a series that, yeah. as as MTV was still going out of style, was still playing on on there on reruns. So that's one I did watch. Yeah, um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of, I mean, those, well, and oh, another thing is my parents would record, you know, VCRs were new in the early 80s. And as I was growing up, my parents got one and they would record compilations of cartoons off TV. Mm-hmm. And um, that was actually a big inspiration for me because my mom would, you know, make these like four to six hour tape mixes of like random stuff she found on tv so there would be like these old woody the woodpeckers tom and jerry uh fleisch old fleischer animations like disney stuff like silly symphony stuff um just random kind of more bizarre i don't even know who made it kind of stuff um but uh and or popeye the sailor man you know oh yeah and um so I grew up watching those tapes over and over and over again. And those kind of drilled into me this weird animated mashup in my mind, because like, I loved that it would have like a commercial break that where they forgot to stop the tape. And there would be like a bit of a commercial for like a coffee company or some random thing. And, and then it's this weird 
out of context stuff happening all the time. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you grew up. Uh, what? How old are you, by the way? I'm just curious. I'm what 31. age? 31. So you're a little bit younger than me, but um, I'm 36. And uh, so VCRs might have been kind of on their way out when you were growing up. No, but, for um, the most part, we had like a lot of VHS tapes with like oh, Bye okay. and Woody Woodpecker and stuff on them. So when you're oh, good. bringing up those yeah. memories, I was I was looking back fondly on those memories. So yeah, I'm familiar with like a lot okay. of a lot of that stuff. Um, what about so, Duck? What? Do you have what any... about me? Yeah. My cartoons. My my cartoons. My favorite cartoons. Um, um, my favorite cartoons um, would be. Uh, let's see here. Um, I love Adventure Time. Adventure Time. Uh, and um, what else do I love? Uh, Miyazaki. I mean, that's not really cartoons. It's film but it's great and uh it's like spirited away uh it's one of my favorite animations yeah uh my my is it my neighbor totoro i can't remember if that's the title or my not my neighbor totoro is, um, yeah um what else do we got uh and um oh i love um uh da david lynch made the series called dumbland um and uh not sure if you've heard of it um i've heard of it but it's but I pretty can't say i've ever watched it it's, it's very very strange it's not for kids uh it's really kind of like goofy funny like fart jokes but then someone's almost getting murdered kind of all of a sudden like like intense violence all of a sudden hmm. um it's it's really weird and then there's like crazy crass gross language in some parts between characters and it's just like this weird bizarre presentation and and david lynch made like the whole thing himself like he animated it he did the sound and he's really good with sound so That's it's awesome. really poignant it's funny yeah me, like though, thinking of duck sitting on the couch eating popcorn watching a david lynch program that you know where <laughs> people are getting murdered. <laughs> that's pretty funny well um, well, well I, the, people almost get murdered i don't think almost. anyone actually gets killed in on dumb land but there's, a, there's some violence um but yeah it sounds um, pretty cool i'll have to check it out yeah yeah and uh and there's just uh what, what else duck do you have any other thing else you want to say uh there's probably something else and i'm probably forgetting about it um david shrigley uh an animator or not animator an artist that we really like uh made a bunch of flash based animations like 10 years ago that were kind of hilarious mm -hmm. they were just on the internet though they weren't like on tv um but his humor is just hilarious yeah. and and kind of crude crudely drawn uh have you ever seen the blur music video for a good song yeah it's like I a, think I have, yeah. a fairy falls in love with a squirrel but then accidentally kills him <laughs> it's kind of a little gross yeah you're like, bringing back some graphic. memories i can't say i can i can bring it up but i'm gonna look it up right after the interview i'm gonna be like yeah, yeah. it's a good one yeah and the leaf blower comes in and starts blowing the blood of the <laughs> sorry i don't want to give it away for people that yeah. haven't seen it but it's pretty funny uh, i mean it's um, probably a pretty old music video by now but yeah it's creepy how much time's gone by i think it came out in the mid aughts so yeah it's been like 15 years that's crazy um, yeah. I'm sad that there's like there's like a bunch of music videos that came out in the aughts that are there are online but they're standard definition so they're like really low res and yeah. it's just really sad to me that they ha they were never made for higher res but it's just the time you know um, people weren't who knows if the source files even exist anymore you know well it's about um, priority I think I had a an old DVD of some old Paul McCartney footage and they had revamped all of his stuff. And I mean, it's about priority. If it's a big name, yeah. if it's a big artist, then they'll keep that footage and they'll archive it. But if you're not a big artist, then they're not going to archive your footage and then they don't have the original work to remaster in the future. Yeah. Maybe now they'll start taking that kind of thing into consideration, especially with cartoons, because I like going back and visiting older cartoons. I have a whole box that you mentioned Thundercats earlier. I have a whole box mm -hmm. set of Thundercats, but it's so grainy, and I wish they could have done something to up the footage there, make it a, a bit better quality. Um, thank you for the follow, not Julia. 
and Senior Pancake and Monty Mescal. I don't know how I'm just noticing these. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it too. Well, hype. Hype. Um, hi, not Julia. Hi, uh, We Speak English Good. I, I did an interview with We Speak English Good. Uh, that was the last interview I did. I found you through Aaron Goldberg when you had him on yeah. your show. And then through Aaron Goldberg, I found We Speak English Good. And then We mm -hmm. Speak English Good did a podcast with you. And then I said, well, I better get on that. So <laughs> uh, I started yeah. planning that out right around then. So awesome. that was... Uh, I'm, I'm glad to have uh, found all these people through Twitch. I'm, I'm very grateful to start meeting these new people and uh, expanding my view on things. I'm pretty new to this, yeah. whole, this whole scene, yeah. especially I haven't done art in a long time. Uh, you have a friend called Borb. He paints, right? Do you paint, Duck? Oh, oh. Uh, do you do any work yourself? I, I mean, I like to draw. I'm, I'm more of a drawer yeah. than a painter. Borb's the painting machine. Um, you do he's poems. just a wizard. And poems. Poem yeah, I like the, the, the very immediate mediums, drawing, uh, poetry, you know, that kind of stuff. Whatever, I can just go shh. shh. Although Borb is pretty fast with the paintings too. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, he's Borb's insane i love watching borb work it relaxes me it allows me to do my own thing i keep him on my big tv back here while i do my own work i've got an easel back here that i have a smaller one but i do some work you know oh, oh hi borb oh. hi nice to Hello. meet you uh, hi valo hi uh well, i love your paintings man i'm a big fan oh th thank you um i i work pretty hard on them and it's good to meet you um i gotta go though i was just saying hi real quick okay <laughs> borb is borb is a little shy when he's not on a show i've noticed um yeah he's it's too bad he's he's such a sweet little guy it's probably because of his mic setup yeah that's it he has a very specific mic setup that requires a little bit more set up than than what i have right now so he's just making a little appearance here and there um, so i've but... noticed you're very <laughs> finicky about your setup you're uh, very specific about how you like things done and if they're not right you almost want to just end your stream sometimes yeah i'm a, a little bit of a perfectionist uh for sure and i think but part of it's like a focus thing where if things are working i'm in my mode or i'm getting into my mode of focus and complete like devotion to the moment and because you know as soon as you introduce fear <laughs> into um the dynamic then it slows down all the thought process that i have mm. it, whoops <laughs> um that's a good fear sound <laughs> fear. um fear ah! um but when there's no fear it's just like every, all the machines are oiled and everything's moving and then um so that's why the poems flow and and i can draw and just come up with ideas but as soon as like i start to worry about like or something doesn't sound quite right like if i were to set my volume to like just a few ticks down from where it is i'll be like i can barely hear myself i, I what's wrong like and then i get really agitated because i feel like it's like i'm on stage and my my fly is undone to me that's how it feels to me very um, nervous moment yeah I yeah can but it, 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 it doesn't matter to most people though um and that's something i'm still figuring out but I, it's part of just my brain i guess that i am highly sensitive to the conditions of what is being presented and you might not notice the difference of a problem but to me it's like a huge problem when it even though it might not be i can definitely and, relate on that fact because uh lately i've been you know with just um being accepted by people has been weird to me like this whole podcast thing i've been receiving a lot of positive feedback i'm not used to that i'm used to taking on a project and failing rather quickly and 
just accepting, okay, I didn't do well this time. And now it's doing pretty good. So I'm getting such good feedback and it's like, okay, so I'm being told that this is good, but I feel like I'm doing bad. And like, sometimes I feel like I'm just like, I listen to these interviews. I don't like my, my own voice. I don't know about you, but when I have to edit stuff, I have to listen to my own self do stuff. I guess you don't well, really being, edit too much. Well, listening to yourself, talking to someone else can be hard because um, especially like, so I early in my career, or post-college, I did film festivals for, well, one year, basically. And I did some interviews, and when I, like, w saw the interview, like, I just thought, man, I look so dumb. And, um, but part of it was because I was trying to look bigger than I was. Like, I I was trying to make an impression out of, in this unknown world, you know, of, like, film people. And, um, and the truth is it didn't really matter and no one really saw it. And um but nowadays I think my understanding of interviewing is just different because I'm not really trying to look bigger than I am. I'm okay with being just open and vulnerable about who I am just as I am and not really trying to make myself look really cool or like, yeah guys, I'm pretty cool and everybody knows about me and um I hope you're in awe because, <laughs> you know, no, it's just, I'm a, just a guy. I'm a, just a guy. Um, I'm just a guy and um, everybody's just a person. Everybody's human and we're all squishy and vulnerable if we allow ourselves. And um, I think we, we get more meaning in this world by being more open and vulnerable in situations that it's okay to be that way. I mean, you can't just always be that way. Well, if you get I mean, pulled over by the police, you're, you're not going to be like, be well. Squishy, no. You got to be hard yeah. sometimes, but you got to know when to be hard. But humans are generally yeah. squishy, so we'll have to figure something out at some point in time. Thank you, yeah. um, that guy, for the follow. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, gotta, I don't have your, your stream sounds on. I, I can't hear them because they would make some uh, feedback uh, if I turned it on, so I don't really get those those sounds. But um, but I see it a little bit over here. Um, oh, by the way, I, a fun little behind the scenes thing. This is uh, when Borb when you vote on Borb show. This is the the little horn. That... I think my echo cancellation canceled that out completely because we didn't hear. It really. Anymore. I this one, this one doesn't really uh, make any sound anymore. It just makes a hiss sound. <laughs> oh, hopefully that was heard. Some of it comes toot, toot. the good stuff. Um, so I saw the other <laughs> day you had previewed a sample of a game that you had made many years ago that was like a latte developer or something like that can you tell me a bit about yeah. that i know it's probably an older game or whatever but i just wanted to ask you yeah. about that yeah no it's fun to talk about it because i've never talked about it with anybody really um so it, i was at an ad agency in seattle called wexley school for girls and <laughs> they're very unusual kind of goofy ad agency and it was the best place for me to be at the time um, but I honestly didn't really like being at an ad agency. But um, we got a pretty big gig working with, um, I'm trying to remember what channel it was. It was a TV channel um, for, um, Thank you, it was Andrew. either like, it was like, um, oh, yeah, no problem. Or maybe someone would remember it. Does anybody remember an animated show that only had one season? that was called neighbors from hell or did you happen to catch that ever it was um it sounds I can't remember it, it was either fx or it might have been fx or tbs oh grandma, no, grandma thank you it was tbs it, it was tbs and um it was a show called neighbors from hell and it was actually produced really well in this i never actually watched it but the art and the styling and they there was a concerted effort to make this like new great show. And um, they hired our ad agency to make some promotional 
things for it. And at the time, Flash was really big and Flash games were big. So, you you know, this is kind of pre-social media. I mean, Facebook existed, but it really like you were making... Their Instagram didn't exist yet. And there was just um, less channels for it content but so people would just you know go to websites and check stuff out and um so they wanted a couple game interactive things to kind of put the show in people's minds and um so i was yeah yeah in congregate uh yeah. with a k uh that they we put it on there too but um so they had us design some games and i did wasn't really involved in the in the um, idea generation, but I was the builders for these games and the designers for the visuals. And um, so I worked with some designers at the agency. And uh, one of the ideas was this game called coffee crazies. And it was just supposed to be you're and you're a demon. That's because the show idea was that this family moved to earth from hell. And, they're trying to blend in and you know so the idea was that you're a barista and you're a demon so you have green hands if you look at it you have cl- gr- green clawed hands so when you take the order from the coffee from the person you have to press all these buttons so um it was nice because it was really fun because you know there's a, a l- bunch of really unique characters who that order coffee and all the we got talent from the office in-house just random people to do voices and but I didn't really, I didn't write any of the humor, um, but I did put it all together, and that was really fun. Um, but it's it's actually kind of a fun game, but I'm actually really horrible at it because I'm bad at remembering lists of yeah. things and details. Did you yeah. play it much? I didn't play that one specifically. <laughs> I, I got to look it up still and find it. If you can send me the link over yeah. Discord, I'm going to try it out because I used to play games like that all the time where you take like an order and make it. So it looks like something I don't uh-huh. play. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, let me see here. It's uh, um, yeah. Um, here we go. There, that's it. Um, so some of the stuff you've got integrated into your stream, like the the word generator and stuff like that, is that how you keep your ideas fresh? Uh, well, the phrase generator was actually so when i was first streaming early on i made a bunch of devices to make it so no one watching didn't matter as much (laughs) and um so because i you know if i was starting out and i would do one of these shows like cartoon mess live and there'd be like no one watching or maybe like two people watching but no one saying anything in the chat you know like i was just like crickets you know like no one is there so I made the random phrase generator to come up with combo na- combinations of words to work with, even if no one was there. And I also made bots that would say things if no one had said anything for a while. And there was all these things of like, oh, if there's crickets, I want the space to be filled, you know. But Ever. obviously, I don't really have that problem anymore. And I feel like when the shows are busier, like I you don't even use a lot of the phrase generator words like some sometimes you just get picky and skip skip them um if mm. i don't think they're hilarious um because it, it really is random in the sense that i mean if i might reopen it with the same word bank but it'll choose a new combo it's random in that sense but um but sometimes you know the combinations just aren't compelling like it'd, it'd be like you know warm sock it's just like not that funny, but um, you know, I mean, it's just kind of. There was one time somebody said the word "fuzzy pickle" to me. If you really think about it, it wasn't it's a fuzzy pickle isn't that funny. But if you just say "fuzzy pickle" to somebody with no context, it's kind of funny. So it really depends yeah. on the context in which you deliver it. If you just say "warm socket" of nowhere, I'm sure somebody would laugh for some reason. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's dependent upon my 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 mood at the time or whatever. But drawing um, a warm yeah. sock might not be as entertaining as just saying the word. So I'll give you that. Yeah, but it, you know, I'm influenced by improv, but I'm not a part of the improv method. I would say, but um, 
and I say that because the I don't know if you've done improv, but improv revolves around yes and, which is like this completely like openly embracing everything that comes towards you. And so I break a lot of those rules by rejecting things. And a lot of my characters say no, and I don't want to deal with this. And there's a lot of like running away from things, which is usually not good for improv. But since I'm working by myself, usually like I can steer it in ways that will be more interesting than if you were actually working with other talent and you just kept, they were like, I'm the king. And you're like, no, you're not the king. You know, it would just be like kind of chaotic. Although there are improv people that, that uh, purposely break those rules. And I think it's actually a bit more interesting than usual, but it's, it's hard to maintain that for theater sports when there's supposed to be rules and um, expectations of how it works. Um, I wish I could do improv someday. Just rewatch middle edition Schwartz. Yeah, Rebecca, that, that's, pretty funny i caught one of those so far you catch those have you seen middle ditch middle ditch and schwartz i can't on say netflix that I, it's from oh is it on netflix no i can't say that i really browse that too often but it gets mm -hmm. on my nerves sometime when i'm looking up there for something actually worth watching and i don't find anything but uh when people recommend yeah. things i like checking them out well it's uh it might be weird because of canada versus u.s uh the sometimes things aren't available in other countries, which is really annoying. <laughs> it's true. Like, um, but yeah, we saw their live shows before, and they're, they're just I can't b believe how big their brains are with uh, how much they can carry at once, moment to moment. Um, they'll be doing like 10 characters at once, like jumping around like a, a dinner table, and it's just two guys, you know, and like they'll keep track of all this stuff but anyways um uh yeah so um what were we talking about i don't i don't exactly remember but <laughs> oh. that's how i am um the word for what you are is a digital puppeteer isn't it i mean that's one way to say it yeah i mean i don't know i don't i've never really settled on a title <laughs> for myself um and uh so because you know i'd say i guess i'm an animator uh deep down because but i'm also an artist because I, I mean i do fine art too and but i'm also a puppeteer but i don't really identify with puppeteering mm -hmm. and i've never worked with other people with, as a puppeteer because puppeteers are usually very they work together a lot and um at least pre-covid <laughs> yeah. um and uh you know there's a big community with puppeteering and there's there's an animation community but animators are more like they stick to themselves i found and i feel like i i'm meet i fit that description um cuz animators are tend to be loners and and like to be work by themselves because it's animation is inherently a control freaks like most wonderful scenario because you get to control every single moment of every all time every frame you get to control and um with, but with filmmaking you have to have a camera and a crew or maybe lights places uh starting and stopping the camera and it's uh it's tedious in its own way but um but it you need people <laughs> I took film classes in college and it was very frustrating to me. I always got this really awful feeling when I knew I had to go down to the rental place to get the camera and the lights. And I had to get people just to help me get the gear to a place so that we could shoot a video. <laughs> and I was just like, it's like if you, if you have to do all this work just to get the tools out to make something, you're not going to make stuff very often unless you love doing it. And right. I did not love it. I found that I, I was big into music. I helped a lot of my friends when I'd go see a mm -hmm. lot of my friends' bands and I'd be the first one to arrive there before my, my friend's band would show up. I'd be like, all right, I'm so stoked to see your band. So I'd help them load their gear up like a flight of 25 stairs. And mm -hmm. it was all just to see these guys play their 15-minute set an hour and a half into the night after people start showing up, you know? And so 
I figured that I, 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 I had some drive of passion into, into me. Um, there's a question in the chat. You recently obtained the status of Twitch partner. Pretty big deal. So where do you want to go with the Twitch format? Um, honestly, my, my goal is just to be able to devote myself to it full time. Because last year, around, well, around a year ago, I started devoting myself more to streaming. And I hit this point where there were still some jobs kind of kind of creeping in and saying like people that I'd worked for saying, Hey, we need more animation stuff. And then I would look at my, you know, like the week ahead of me or the month, the weeks ahead of me and think, Oh, well, if I take on this job, I won't really be able to focus on streaming, you know? And um, so my goal, my recent goal was just to be able to make enough money with streaming to justify not taking jobs anymore so that I can devote myself to making these creative streams happen and make them more creative and keep adding to them. And I kind of juggled jobs back and forth till last September. And then September, I, uh, I kind of decided to say no to things unless they were smaller and a really good fit you know and so right now i have a pretty high bar for saying yes to a job um and uh so it's it's um it's so i'm kind of doing what i want right now but i would say the money isn't there yet like i'm making enough that it isn't just me pretending and never getting anywhere like i am making a decent amount of money but it's you know, like half what my wife makes, basically, you know, like, so um, I would love to be making the same thing she makes. But, um, but it's just, uh, it's enough for me to devote myself knowing that it will increase, you know, and um, so and it's not about the money at all. But I just can't be a guy playing around and not making a living because my wife works full time. And it's kind of insulting to just just make art and play all the time without it being actually an income, you know? So, um, that's caused some tension here and there before, but, um, but she believes she, she, she believes in what I'm doing and, and supports me and was the first investor in cartoon mess live <laughs> because she, she, but she, she loves her job. She's a designer and, um, does uh lo loves what she does thank too, god and is for very the women in it. our lives or we'd be yes. nowhere without them i swear you know my my wife basically built my entire <laughs> studio for me so wow praise them um and so and what's your uh your vocation well as far as like what i do for a living i just podcast and i do art I don't really have an income source right now. Neither does my wife, but we live with my father, so uh, we're 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 kind of on tough strides right now with my kids. Uh, my one of my oh, you kids got has, kids? Wow! I have two kids. Mm. One of them actually has a disability, so it's a bit oh, of okay. a struggle. Mm. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. Mm. I would say sixty percent of the time he can still walk, but uh, he's got. Um, a hereditary disease called muscular dystrophy. So, oh yeah, yeah, we deal with that a little Sorry. bit. Thank you. Um, yeah, but <clears throat> as far as uh, I mean, I'm I'm basically how, a how old are they artist. again? My oldest is ten. He, he's the one with the wheelchair, and my youngest is mm -hmm. uh, he's eight. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second yeah. because it was past March, <laughs> so his birthday recently passed. So. Um, but yeah, so it's, 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 it's fun to hang out with them and they really sort of inspire me as far as like, cause I get to watch a lot of cartoons with them and be silly and still have that like sort of imagination that I, you know, I never really lost that spark. So it's good to have, now that I have kids, I'm not gonna, I feel like I'm not going to lose that. I going to be there for me for a while. So cause yeah. driving to have like youth to look at you know like that playfulness and 
if you, if you lose that in your own life while you're growing up, I feel that's what sort of makes you bitter and you're, eh, I don't want to, these kids make me salty or something like that. But <clears throat> if yeah. you can maintain that youthfulness and that spark of joy and like, I'm very curious. I'm a very curious person. If I find something I don't know about, I'm like, ooh, what's this? And I've always maintained mm -hmm. that sort of like a glimmer in my eye or whatever you want to call it that when I see something Curiosity, new. Curiosity, yeah. It's, it's so having kids that, while I still maintain that youthfulness, I think is what's going to keep me from dimming out in creativity. But what keeps you going for like creativity? Where do you like draw your inspiration from and like where did duck mm. come from <laughs> uh duck cover your ears i don't have ears um <laughs> that's right you don't have ears that's funny um <laughs> um uh so uh i'm Apologize. I apologize if like I uh, space out a little bit on this. Um, it's hard for me to think of uh, like when people ask like what artists I like. It's so hard for me to think of lists. But let me think about this. Um, so what keeps me going? Um, I would say one thing that is a little unusual about me as far as I don't actually watch a lot of animation these days, and I don't really actually look at that much art and i don't really look at stuff that much and um partly because i'm impatient and i like creating so much that i just want to create and like sometimes getting me to even watch a movie can be hard but um but i would say that what keeps me going is um aside from having an awesome marriage with my wife and having my best friend around me all the time which is like the foundational amazing part of life uh, for me. Um, I would say just knowing myself deeply and um, knowing what my desires are in this life. And um, cause I would say that, you know, post college there was a big dip in my life where my dreams kind of started to i didn't know what they were because i thought well i want to be an artist or i want to be creative i want to be an animator whatever it is college set me up for like feeling pretty confident about my skills mm -hmm. and then but then i got into the real world and translating all that desire into vocation was felt impossible as most artists experience like 99 percent of artists experience and um so i would you know work this job that was creative which is the ad agency at the time and then i would want to come home and make something that was mine you know and um there was a lot of tension and a lot of disappointment during that time and some depression but i never stopped creating um but i would say that what's different between then and now is that um well I'm fast forwarding a lot, but I also ended up getting a different job that gave me a little more mental room to be myself and wasn't as challenging to me so that I had more energy for my work. Um, but what keeps me going is the delight and curiosity of being able to make new things happen every day, you know, and because whenever I like come up with a wacky new idea that makes me laugh or makes my wife laugh, or if she comes up with an idea for me, like it's just, it's life. It's like breathing, you know, it just feels so good. If I go a long time without doing that, um, I get pretty stagnant. And I've one challenge for me recently w with streaming is that streaming is creative and inherently creative that I'm like d being creative in front of you all. But I found that if I do it all the time, it actually doesn't give me enough room to to do something that's just for me because I need that to feel fulfilled, I think. And um, being on camera and being being presented um, isn't enough for me. So I'm still learning what the balance is. But I would say that I I've come to understand, a lot, especially in the last like five or six years, since I quit my job, started freelancing full time, I found that just having a creative practice is what matters 
most to me for my creative propel like propelling myself forward it happens because i have a daily exploration of what's possible for me creatively and it doesn't really have to be successful in the kind of things like i don't because there was a time early on where i thought well i want to have a tv show or i want to i want to be known in this certain specific way or i want to go viral or something like that and as i've gotten older I care about that less and less and less. And I'm, and to tie it back to the last question, being able to do streaming full time and make enough money, to me, that's living the dream to me. That's success. And um, so I, I feel, I actually feel successful, but that's a very fleeting thought because I say that, but I mean, I've been dealing with, useless sad feelings this week partly because of the time of year you know in between christmas and new year's it's like this this kind of like the holidays are over except for new year's and and there's this kind of like reevaluation of like what am i doing what am i what, what's next what am i gonna do and and that's a natural feeling i think and it can be a scary feeling but um i think that i my big challenge right now is to give myself more time actually, which means maybe less streaming. Uh, but I don't want to quit streaming. It's just that I might need to do it less days or, or take breaks more often, like one week on one week off kind of thing. I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm still figuring it out, you know? Um, but I'd say that I love being surprised. And when, you know, I'm watching a movie. It's kind of it's hard to find great movies. Like you watch movies, and you're like, "That was good, that was good." But you know when you see a movie and it touches your soul, and you feel like this is like about my life, not literally, but just it. They're talking about what I've been thinking about, and right. the, like you know when you have that connecting moment, I I love those things. And sometimes I find it in an article that I'm reading on the news, like on New York Times or something, or or I'll see it in a movie that I didn't really expect much from, but then it had this deep reality to it. And, um, but I, I would say I'm disappointed oftentimes in a lot of media that I watch or movies or, um, I'm kind of a little bit of a, I mean, I, 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 I make, I would kind of worry that I make people sad sometimes because they'll be like, Oh, you should check out this animation. And I'm like, okay and then i like look at him like yeah it's cool but i don't really i'm not really into it but thanks for showing me you know and i do that a lot because i'm very picky but but i uh i don't know um does does that answer your question (laughs) i mean kind of um so (laughs) when when you look into your imagination and what you uh oh my Mm -hmm. my screen disappeared for a second hold on i'm good now when you look into okay, your yeah. imagination, where does your creativity come from? Where did you get duck? Where did you, where oh did my you come up with your shows? There's another uh, question in chat that I'm going to ask afterward. Okay. Uh, well, so duck felt totally random to me. Uh, I remember I started out with a puppet of myself that was me literally. Like, well, not lit- literally. Here, I'll... Uh, I can actually bring it up. I have um, the old files of my um, old puppets, but um, thank you for the follow of your uh, chart. <laughs> um, here, I'll show you. Uh, plug this in really quick. Let me uh, switch to this guy. Oh, wrong. Not you, Borb. Not you, Duck. Sorry, I my windows aren't labeled. Uh, hello. So, oh, you're not looking at that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hmm. Uh, so that this was my first, first puppet, uh, uh, not the very first, but it's the first one that was like me performing, uh, as something and, it, you know, uh, the, where's my eyebrows? Uh, I forget how this one, this one's, um, <laughs> different, uh, key mapping. Whoa. I got a crazy zoom different there. Buttons. Um, different buttons what buttons uh, i wonder what, what else do i got oh i got the cat though the cats are still in this one. Oh yeah those are they're, they're old and there's a drawing uh 
human human arm. Uh, but anyways, um, the uh, so um, I had a, me, but I remember feeling sort of stagnant with my. It it felt a little too recursive. Like I was just, it was an animation of me being me, mm. and I thought I want to have like a goofy character. But the irony is that Duck is still me. D- Duck is just still me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. But but I I started drawing him. Just I just drew. I I think I drew like two drawings of a duck character because I thought a duck would be fun to have like a big beak. I thought a big mouth would be fun. You know, something that wasn't uh, phonetically driven like this. You know, I mean it still kind of is. Because he's got O mouth and an ah mouth and stuff. But it was kind of more like, oh, that would be fun to have a big flapping thing, you know. Um, and so I think I, I drew him really fast, kind of non-committal, just trying it out, you know. And then it stuck. And um, it's funny because I showed some people. I started streaming on Facebook at first because my friends were there. So I would do like live streams on on there and. I remember um, talking to a friend of mine I grew up with, and she was like, oh, my God, I remember Duck. And I was like, what do you mean you remember Duck? And she was like, in third grade, you, like, would draw this duck? for." I remember we were, like, laughing at it so hard, and you, like, drew it for everyone in the class. And I'm like, I have no memory of d- this other duck. Um, but she was like, you can't, you can't remember that? How can you not remember that? I'm like, I don't know. But... Um, so apparently I've I've been drawing ducks for a while, but I didn't remember that I did. And I think he's sort of deep in my subconscious or something. I do have some drawings of a duck character from the early 2000s, but but that that she was talking about was from like 1992, you know. So, um, but uh, so there's something funny about ducks to me. Maybe it's like a Donald Duck coming back to haunt me from you know. Du- I loved watching Donald Duck as a kid, you know, um, but um, I don't know where my ideas come from. I think that what happens is, is that I'm open to ridiculous new things and I'm willing to give them a shot. And so when I drew Duck, I didn't really know if it was like a enduring character. I I had no idea, but playing with it was fun. So all I knew in that moment was that it was fun to play with. And then I, didn't feel like making a new character so <laughs> it was like that's it and and um so yeah and, and grandma said he's your kermit um it's and then in with the streaming i found that when you try out an idea if it's funny it's never going away ever again you know like it's just i mean it, it might i mean it might come and go like right now we got four 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 the four four joke and the new way of typing that you're laughing, you know. I mean that came out of nowhere and that was goofy, but people are still doing it and that's how things happen. It's like a snowball where you start one thing and it rolls and it gets bigger and you're like people are like, How'd you come up with it? I'm like, I didn't kind of like it it feels like it just happened, you know? And um that's how I feel like a lot of my ideas are. Are, they come from the air and they I pull them from my bank of thoughts and I think that a lot of people have filters that try to censor those thoughts you know you're um, basically saying the exact same thing I've said in a couple of other podcasts so you're validating me here Very yeah cool. good I, I'm glad, glad to hear that <laughs> um, yeah. so we we've, we've talked about that leading into you were talking about how when when somebody's funny and you don't want to make another character you just don't feel like making another character that kind of rolls into this do you have a favorite show out of like duck and borb and well which one is uh, your favorite it, it's hard to choose they're like children yeah. uh and i don't have kids so they're my kids right now but um <laughs> um uh i would say that duck is my core uh show because it's a space that allows me to be closest to who I am normally, and it's very natural to me. And um, uh, Borb, painting with Borb, 
is a piece of me, but not really, um, you know, as me as duck is, but, um, there's a piece of me in, in Borb and, and like when I get quiet, I am like Borb kind of like, I, I kind of grew up with this trying to lay low kind of mentality, but I'm an extrovert too. So, um, Borb is kind of like when I'm quiet and duck is when I'm extroverted more. And, um, and then well is, well, the funny thing with well is that my wife did the voice for well when we first did it. And it was years ago. Now it was in like 2016, late 2016. We were, I was creating these puppets because there was this stream app called hype <laughs> and we were on the the beta testing for it and uh it was like a app where you could live stream to your friends or whatever and it doesn't really exist anymore i don't think but um but i was making these little puppets that i could i had to film my screen to show them and um we we wanted to make a show that worked vertical for a phone and it was we made the well with the coin flipping in and the frog guy and my wife who had the idea that I can't do it the way she would, but he was like, Oh, hi, I'm the well wishing, wishing well. And just had this kind of almost Mickey mouse, but calmer kind of voice. And, but it's funny cause Eventually, like I just wanted to work on making the show happen again without needing her to do the performance, so I just ended up redoing. So that show feels the least mine because I felt like she came up with the core character and the core personality. Um, and uh, but I do like doing that show, and uh, I like doing all of them. And there's more shows I want to do. Um, I feel like I've been. Ever since I got partner, I've been a little bit like on the run, um, and I'm hoping to refocus in the new year a little bit. I also have some some work I'm doing that um, is a really good thing to be doing, um, and I uh, can't mention it, but um, but I I will be able to share it at some point. But um, but yeah, um, what was that? That was in regards to which show is my favorite. So yeah, I would say that. I mean, Borb and Ducker, they're like they keep each other in balance. I mostly go back and forth between them because if I do too many cartoon messes, two cartoon mess lives in a row, I start to like get tired of it. And if I do too many Borbs, I get tired of it. So it's like if I they cycle, it's great. Like mm -hmm. they keep each other balance so i think uh, oh it, what were you saying just just uh just said she was inspired by joe para with the voice for uh the original well wishing wishing well i don't know if you've watched joe para before he's hilarious um, I'll check him out though he's like a old man but he's not old um <laughs> he talks really slow and he's really calming and uh, he had an adult swim show um but uh he's great Cool. Um, what was I going to say now? Uh, where do you... You, you said you had a question, I think, uh, from the chat? Yeah, I, no, that was, the, that was the last one that I asked. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. I was, I was asked by uh, We Speak English Good if you could animate me or draw me right now on the spot. Oh. Is that something you can of do? Of course. Yeah. Here, let's, uh, let's go to here. Yeah, I've got you uh, open. Here, let me... Uh... The trick with um, drawing people um, and making them animated live is the getting the mouth right because I don't have a, a infinite. I'll just use this mouth, I guess, but I can't. I, I'm not creating this mouth live. Obviously, it's a pre-made mouth, but uh, so now that's there. Let's your eyes here. I was. I feel like I made your nose too big, but oh well. Um, I like I prefer Borb's painting tool when drawing people, but um, well, I made your nose very big, but oh well. Um, 
Uh, let me get your... That's right. I look like Ringo. <laughs> add some little squinty squint lines there and then uh let's add your hair here Maybe put your headphones some cheek here oh i'm well i made that way out there there i should bring that in there i saw i started to sound a little bit like borable all of a sudden I'm like there we go but that yeah. also is sounding kind of like Bob Ross. I found that, you know, I've watched a lot of Bob Ross and he, he starts to bleed through what I say too, because he's always just like kind of whispering on, there we go. I think when you're a getting intimate with your artwork, you start to whisper. At least I do when I'm like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so constant, uh, so concentrating so hard. Um, uh, let me thicken this mustache a little bit here. And then uh, make this a little darker, and then uh, fill these. You got hair coming down here, and then uh, I'll just go. And then uh, all right, when it, when I say go, just start talking. I'll I'll try to puppet you. Okay, okay. go. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Valo Infinity. I have a show on Twitch. It's called The Artist Eye. I have Tom Thinks on my podcast right now. You should check it out. Ta-da! 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 It's a pretty good drawing, though. I like it. Yeah, you did great. Yeah. Or, I mean, Tom, you, you drew Valo great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, there I am. Thank you, thank you. No, it's not going to mesh up properly. Yeah, there might be a little delay. Delay! Oh, so no! Delay! Ah! You're, um, you look fine, though. You don't look delayed. Oh, chips are on if someone wants to feed me a chip. Um, Senior Pancake, this is your chance. You can go to Tom's wanna... channel and throw a Dorito chip in the chat. Throw a Dorito. Yeah. Then you're... Your name will appear, too. Let's see how long it takes. It. Oh, Ereku did it. My phone's not loading anyway. I think the name might be cropped, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, but thank you, Ereku. Thanks for the chip. Is that so an yummy. interesting feature you have on there? Is that just like a script that you have running? Um, well, this whole thing's a script. Duck, you shouldn't be talking about that. Um, no, uh, I mean, the, the Duck's whole world is scripted. Uh, there's code with uh, triggering mouths and paying attention to, you know, what's happening and when and stuff. So, and there's animations. And um, the, so that I have animations of chips flying. And basically, I have a bot, you know, that listens to the Twitch chat. And when a chip is thrown, it sends a variable to my animation document that listens to see if there's a recent chip emote. And it actually kind of just grabs off the top. It doesn't process every chip request. It just kind of grabs one and and then triggers a chip. The most recent and, one that it can process. Yeah. And um, so it's a little random. Uh, if like 10 people do a chip at once, it'll just kind of grab whichever one it grabs because it checks like every second, like once a second, I think. Um, but it also has a cooldown of like, 10 seconds i think um so getting your chip in you know so if you're the only one doing it it, it you know, you have a good chance of it but um it's kind of hard to explain w without going into detail but i mean it's like i use javascript and json uh uh process or files uh to uh send data to my animation file which is in built in flash and um yeah so i mean it's it's just kind of my flash document has a bunch of pre-made animations in it and it's just basically hooking them up to events that happen, you know, in the chat or, or by key presses and stuff like that, you know? Oh, well, um, I feel like anything that's uh -huh. like, um, anything that's like creative like that, it's all, um, like scripts and stuff like that. There's, there's sort of like artwork in the same way that like, 
duck his artwork. You know, it's it's just a couple lines on a white background, but if you've mm. got those lines making numbers and stuff, it doesn't make sense to anybody but who understands it. You know, mm-hmm. you understand the script, and then it doesn't need to make sense to anybody else. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like Legos. I mean, it's like the script's yeah. language is blocks. You know, and uh, you put the blocks together in a way that serves your need. And then um, it doesn't matter whether people know exactly how you built it. They just see the end product and they go, oh, well, that's cool. I didn't, know you could build, I didn't know you could build a ship with blocks, you know, like that kind of thing. You know, it's just kind of if you got the instructions, you could build one yourself, you know. So it's just kind of it's just a matter of arranging just I mean, that's the core artistic experience is arranging things and space and um so yeah, I think programming is just another piece, creative creativity. Uh, it is very syntactic. Uh, it has very strict rules, um, and it has limits to processing power. But um, but it, it's uh, I enjoy it. I'm I'm self taught with code. I I just did tutorials in the early two thousands and had a lot of time to learn and learned a bunch of stuff and um, never stopped. It's quite fun to play with code. Um, yeah, I think it's important to keep learning stuff. If, if coding is like, I, I'm a little bit of a dabbler in many things that I've taken on. Mm-hmm. Like I used to, like I was mentioning earlier, I used to paint a long time ago. I haven't really taken mm-hmm. it up again until more recently, and I've been having fun doing it. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily great at it, but I've been having a lot of fun. So it, I think that's Good. what it's about, you know? Just doing it for oh, yeah. relaxation. I- yeah, if it feeds you. Yeah, if it feeds you, that's magical. And uh, like, you know, I'd say there was, there's been times in my life where I've been very preoccupied with progress in the sense of getting stuff done, like which made me vulnerable to. I'm I'm a people pleaser, and that can be a problem sometimes. And but put me in a high pressure job scenario where I really need to get something done. Well, guess what? I'm going to devote myself to making it happen, get it done on time. I'm going to work really hard, be f- really focused on it. And um, but that's that's just a task, you know, it's like a good boy task of like, I'm really scared of this not getting done and mm-hmm. getting it done. It isn't really inspired the way that like my streams are like because my streams i i put my streams off like i'll sometimes not work on them when i should and i'll, I'll be lazy and i'll eat lunch and then just to be like you should get down and shouldn't you be getting ready for your show i'm like yeah and then i'll get down and sure enough i'm 10 minutes late for streaming it at the time i like to stream at and but I, but i'm I feel like I'm always doing it, like at least what I need to be doing to get by, you know, and um, I, I'm not a taskmaster about what I'm doing unless I'm doing some kind of big push. Like on Halloween, we had Derek the Demon on from Demon Quilt on uh, Borb's computer. And that was like a considerable, like a week long effort of designing and preparing. And I can imagine um, yeah so there's a lot to adding anything new to especially to a stream but yeah derek is something else (laughs) (laughs) yeah he he's been missing lately and i i feel bad but um i have sort of a i have a weird sound well we were talking about sound earlier and i'm very sensitive to sound problems and um i use this voice uh manipulator called a roland vt3 which is where i get my my voice is like this and stuff like that and um uh and it responds differently to different mics and borbs setup has this other mic on it here i can show it to you i have it taped to paper so that um oh, yeah. i remember when i draw this in the stream one time let me turn i'm turning it on um I mean, it sounds different when it's taped down, but, um, but, uh, 
So when I have that on, um, so you can even hear a little bit of a, a weird warbly sound in my voice right now. Yeah. And it's because I have one mic running straight to my board and then I have one mic going to an effects processor and then out to the board. So it creates this very tiny delay and there's a, they're out of sync, but it's this very small out of syncness, you know? Yeah. Um, so I found that to do voice effects on Borb Show, I have to run both mics through a smaller mixer and then go out to that to my effects processor, then into my mixer from there. And that works okay, except for the other mic, this uh, paper one, um, has a, uh, I forget what the word is. It's like um, the white noise, like the bass level. It's kind of noisier ambience wise. And when I have it, when I have both signals going into my effects processor, it's kind of designed for a single. And it kind of messes it up. And it, I have to, there's a mic sense that it does an auto leveling. And I kind of have to turn that all the way down and then turn the whole thing up and sound gets a little weird. And then it messes with Borb sound. And then yeah. when it messes with Borb sound, I can't handle it. So I did all this stuff so that I could have Derek on the show. But every time I have him on the show, I feel all stressed out. Like, it sounds, Borb sounds different. Because if Borb sounds different, I'm just like, if I want to make it even more elaborate, I can have it so I can run it through, run everything through the voice effects processor, but then also have it direct somehow. I don't know. I need to talk to a sound genius. Yeah. Um, I but, wish I had one yeah. of those, a sound genius. <laughs> We all, if we could all have a sound genius just in our closet somewhere. Hey, Mike, you going to be here on Friday? <laughs> another dimension. So, uh, not Julia was saying another dimension. So I was, I think this is the pro, the effects thing that was used for that effect or whatever in the BC Boys song. I wanted to it's ask a vocal. Duck if we could, could get a be. dance listed at a duck. Can we get a dance? Get a what? Duck? A, a dance? Duck. I want to see a dancing duck yeah. on the screen. Um, what about all right. everybody else in chat? You want to see a dancing duck? I want to see a dancing duck. So is it cool if I play some music for yeah, dancing sure. duck? Should be fun. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't, uh, my DJ. translation doesn't kill it. <laughs> Voila! Time to dance! Ooh, I'm on Valor Show and I'm dancing for you. We're dancing so hard, you know it's true. Yeah! Uh-huh. Working up a thirst! Yeah, of course! So drink a ghost beer? What's that? A Is ghost beer. Ghost beer? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Helmet, for the champ. Oh, ah, bam, boom, 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 bam. Yeah, yeah. One of those laser beams. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Thank you, Doc, for dancing on my show. And thank you, Tom, for being here. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, no problem. D Doug loves to dance. Um, yeah, did, were there any other questions? I can't remember. I'm sorry, I'm kind of bad. Were there any at... more questions for uh, Tom in chat? Anybody got any questions for Tom before we head off? First of all, why don't you, uh, if you've got any websites or anything you want to shout out, I believe I have a, a thing in chat. Check out Tom at all those links, his YouTube, his website, his Twitch channel. You're doing good there. <laughs> Check out all those socials. <laughs> it's funny. Can you talk? Uh, I mean, the main ones are where we already are right now, but I'd say, you know, Twitch. Oh, oh. Ereveku says, who's your favorite mod? <laughs> That's a naughty question. There is no favorite. There is no favorite mod. Come on, Airbeku. It doesn't exist. No favorite mods. 
Lord Each Helmet equal. says, uh, would there be a dream collaboration with another artist? Um, I could say, um, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's Tom, you should talk about this. Um, so my, my work is so personal. Like I'm literally, you know, doing all the voices except for grandma, you know, um, that it's kind of a deep process where it's kind of hard to bring other people into it. It's like, it's hard to like, if you were in my house and I said, Hey, Valo, I made you a puppet. Then you have to learn how to do it. Right. You know, like to make the puppet talk with key presses and stuff. And most people aren't really ready and prepared to do that. So the, the, the thought of like a, getting uh, some like famous collaborator to commit to doing that seems unlikely to me and it would more like be like having them be, be a guest on the show maybe or something like that um i mean there are artists i admire and i would you know there are people that have inspired me greatly and like you know um mark Marin is a huge inspiration to me because he interviews people he's been doing that for a very long time on wtf pod and you know the idea of like being able to have bigger celebrities like be a guest on my show, which actually would be very stressful for me. Um, Cause like doing the shows for me is pretty fun, but whenever I bring someone in, it's pretty stressful. Like I get pretty hot and like, I'm trying to like listen to them, but also pull all these cords and push these buttons and do all that, make all these things happen. And, um, but you know, like Mark Marin or David Shrigley, the artist, I love David Shrigley's work. Uh, um, there's a lot of people that are dead that I wish I could talk to, um, like Jim Henson or uh, um, Vincent Van Gogh or uh, Shel Silverstein or, um, uh, you know, it's it's just, um, uh, but you know, it, the idea of having an actual candid interview by a cartoon like an actual space ghost coast to coast oh that was another one space ghost coast to coast i don't know if you ever watched that yeah I have. um like you know i feel like my show is kind of making that real but i know when they did it i think they pre-recorded interviews with celebrities and then animated the content to it um so that you know they weren't talking to an actual live character um they were kind of pretending to um, but now I have the ability to actually do that and, but I'm unknown. I mean, you, you were like, oh, well-known. I'm like, I'm not really well-known. I'm not like, I, I, I'm getting a following on Twitch, which is great. And I'm a partner now, which is cool. But when you tell people what I do and they haven't seen it, they don't know what the hell you're talking about and they well, don't that's care. That's true. But that's the same with any oh. Twitch streamer or anybody who's doing right. this, like, Video games I guess for a living. Right. Doesn't mean it's and, le any less valid than anything else that's being done. True. But it is a challenge getting my show to make sense to people who have no time or interest in watching it. Um, so getting people on board to be guests would be very difficult unless I made some kind of big, had some kind of big break where everybody saw what I was doing and then knew what it was. Because there's, you just, have to kind of on during the Super Bowl for Cartoon Mess Live. Well, That's then, all you have to do. But no, but Valo, the challenge is I found that I've and I found this out with ads because I've made some ads before, and the the problem comes to the inherent value of my show is that it is live. So when you show footage of liveness happening, people don't really know what it is. They kind of go, "Oh, it's an animation." That's why or, I like you your know, intro. The, the performance yeah. you are about to see is improvised. <laughs> it may be animated, Wait. but it is improvised. Please respond. There it is. Hello. <laughs> I'm already laughing. The performance that you are about to witness is improvised. <laughs> it may be animated. Well, anyways, I. Oh, that's good it's enough. But, um, wait, but uh, thanks. But um, so. Uh, when when you even if you have a cartoon looking you in the eye and saying, "Here, what what's better than to actually get one?" Here, let's uh, where did what am I doing? I like accidentally closed. 
something. Um, Happens to me I, all the time. I'll just yeah, do I've been one like, thing and I'll be like, where am I? What did I do? What did I do? Doc, you're dead. <laughs> uh, he's frozen, but no, I got it here. Um, uh, Thank you, Aaron. Oh, I'm, I'm, hello, I'm looking you in the eye. This, what you're watching right now is live. Live right that now. Does, it was. That does not, that means nothing to someone who's like, uh, so what am I looking at? It just looks like an animated show. It's a cartoon show where they animate stuff to audio from a thing or whatever. But it's like, no, this is live, like Saturday night. You Saturday know, like night live, yeah. So, so I have. There's a little bit. People are not looking for live animation. Um, they assume it's a face rig thing, which is a little cheap to me. Like, not to knock face rigs, but you know, like Snapchat, like anyone can get a face rig that goes on their face. And then it's like, they're, they're a puppy now. Mm. And it's a cheap effect because anyone can have it. Um, and it, the things I craft are unique and they're evolving and it's an art, uh, it's an artistic endeavor. And Hey Aaron Goldberg, thanks for connecting us. Um, so you know, where uh, Aaron. So uh, my I guess my point is that I the mystery of what I'm doing keeps it small. Um and I'm realizing that I don't care and I like that. Um and I'm fine with slow growth. Because if like I said, my goal is to be able to devote myself to it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. because if 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 it just wasn't catching on and I couldn't make a buck at all. I wouldn't be able to devote myself to it because I'd have to do jobs, make money, but I'm making enough money that I'm okay to make less money and do what I love. I'm that's a trade for me that I'm okay with doing. Cause I feel like if I commit to it, it will grow. Um, and for right now, like if Justin Bieber was like, Hey guys, Hey fam, check out Tom thinks on Twitch. He's, he's amazing. And then like, a million people showed up. Do you know how horrible that would feel? That, that would suck. It was. I like, mean, it really. Would. When I when I was <laughs> uh, when I first started streaming, I was doing Twitches like a gamer, and I, I got raided one time with like a party of like thirty five people, and it was like my first week in streaming. I didn't uh -huh. know what to do. I just I yeah. deer in headlights. Deer in headlights is exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. I I do that often. Yeah. I'm like. Like just stand there, like I end up in that like that in photos. So it's just it was yeah. just overwhelming. And what do I do with thirty five people? They're all gonna leave in a second. I'm not entertaining enough for them. You know. Yeah, it's and I mean, it, I, I don't know if have you ever seen like the streams on Twitch where there's like thirty thousand people watching or a hundred thousand people watching. And I mean, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I mean, there might be some good things that come with it financially or support wise or whatever but to me one of the beauties that keeps me like loving what i'm doing even when i have periods of not innovating in it because like innovation keeps me interested but also the community keeps me interested and my mods keep me interested and being able to recognize names in the chat and cultivate memory of people and having a community that's like a huge part of it that i mean makes it totally unique than like making slaving away on an animation for a year and then releasing like a short animation that tells a story that I'm excited to and then hoping people like it when I'm doing something live and I get to see Aaron Goldberg and Monty Misco and in you Valo uh, and I get to see you again and I see your, your I mean the subs are great and I'm I'm thrilled that people want to support me but having the running jokes and the the callbacks and the funny things that happen and like seeing me do a baby name that was a repeat for the first time. Like that was a huge moment and Pompey was there and maybe you were there and it was a big deal. And then we came with four, 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 four. And then it's like all these things are being developed. And um, I feel like um, I'm growing in a way that feels so good that like, I don't want to, I don't, 
the, the biggest interruption has been uh, Kit Boga raiding me with, you know, three to 5,000 people here and there. And, you know, those dwindle quickly down to about a thousand ish. And, but I found that cultivating the community that you, you want to have like kindness and consideration if you can do that, even with a thousand people, that's like a huge, huge relief. And I've found that there have been times where Kid Boga raided and then there's a thousand people watching and I'm having a ball and there's people asking questions. They're like, how does this work? And this is amazing. And I'm like, well, you're here. And I love that I can see that a new person is here and I can see their comment and I can say hi. Like, that's amazing. Because, you know, when you have a hundred thousand people watching, they limit it. Like I've seen like, rocket launches where it's like nasa and they limit the chat to you can only type like a sentence or like an emote seconds or whatever yeah yeah and it's just imagine. like the stream of garbage it's right. just like a river of nothing it's like why even have it um and so my my hope is to grow with my audience and they'll grow with me and we can have fun for a long time and not have just this tsunami of randos, you know? Um, I think that when Kip Boga raids us, it's, it's great. It's a good challenge, but you know, like having the life changing growth of like thousands and thousands and thousands of people watching, like that's not really something I'm pining for. I'm looking for connection and fun and creativity because that's what keeps me connected to it. Because I found that even with like doing Borb lately has been a little challenging because I found that I'm not looking at the comments as much and I'm missing a lot of comments and I feel really sad about that. But I know that it's humanly impossible for me to keep track of it all. Yeah. But that's where the mods really help. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, they, they nudge me with comments that stick out that they want me to see. And they're my eyes a lot of the time. And, um but i love i refuse to turn on followers only or let alone subs only because i like it that even if there's a lot of people watching i love that a random person can come in that has a genuine question that can say hey what is what is this and i i i love it when people ask that like i'm not like oh well we've gone over this a million times how how dare you ask that you know it's or don't don't bother me with such simple things i mean what really pisses me off is just when people don't care and they come in and they post garbage and they don't care and and they're just wasting everyone's time and they're wasting their own and get some kind of cheap weird laugh out of it but um yeah. why is it wiggly <laughs> why is it wiggly yeah people ask it why is your art wiggling borb um it's magic magic but magic art uh, from the magic what was it magic poncho that he wears or whatever what is it poncho or is it a shirt? his shirt yeah it's shirt. just that he found it at a thrift store um gives him the magic but uh i'm reading some of the comments here um oh thanks valo for i said thank you your kindness is immeasurable all alerts are muted for the integrity of the interview but i appreciate oh you're saying that to the audience i see that's my favorite thing about twitch being able to see some the same people almost every time is so cool i'm always there except when i'm not yeah i see <laughs> sorry it. just catch the slow growth is is perfect because it allows you time to get to know the people, right? And I think that's amazing, <clears throat> building a community like that. And like, if you can slowly get to know everybody, then that's the best way to do it. I mean, I wouldn't be comfortable with a hundred thousand people rating in here either. So, yeah, I've been trying to figure out what what really happens when the noise is too great, you know. And subs only might be part of the solution, but like. I mean, I would hope that the 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 trend I'm finding with my the people that follow what I do is that there are plenty of people that like to lurk, mm. and and that's totally cool. And because they find the the process the shows relaxing and they like just kind of observing it. And so there's a fair amount of people that will always be kind of quiet when they watch, and that's totally fine. And I like that. And then there's people that really like to engage and to say jokes and and um pr push the content forward and affect it 
and there are people that do that really well. And then there's people that want to do it, but don't do it well, but they're sometimes they're children. Sometimes they're just immature. Um, I try to work with people, but I can't catch every comment, but, um, but I like keeping it open instead of just upping the exclusivity till it's like subs only chat. You can only say something if you pay, yeah. you know, or something. I'm only um, going to respond if you're a member of my Patreon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, that to me sounds really sad, but I mean, so I'm a big, Oh, as far as inspiration, Jack Stauber, big inspiration. Uh, I'm, I'm a, thrilled at his success and how big he's blown up and but i've seen his audience he's he's huge you know he's so huge and there becomes there comes with it this crappiness when you're that big and people steal your stuff and people just steal your stuff literally like he had his music stolen oh wait i don't know if i should mention that I don't know if that was something he wanted broadcasted, but um, uh, I support him on his Patreon and uh, I've been doing it for a few years now, but, um, but he, you know, he's had crap happen because people were being crappy to him and, um, and having that level of, of audience watching you is um, it's uh, it's, it's kind of like, you know, mo money, mo problems, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. like uh it's just like you, you might think you want fame and money. And I found that the things I want are art driven and I want to be able to support myself, but I don't need a lot of money. Like I'm okay with enough money because mm -hmm. I spent the last couple of years leading up to now working really hard and making money and being very dissatisfied, you know? And, um, I made, I made a lot of money that it's like it, it was going up. I was making more money, but I was, then my wife couldn't sleep anymore. And I was really like burned out. And like, I, you know, I was having anxiety about doing jobs and it's like I broke, you know, like I, I pursued money and influence and bigness. And then I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> This didn't. This wasn't worth it. I mean, I made some money. Yay! I could maybe pay off a student loan or something. And um, but then what? You know. But now with this, I'm like, all right, great stream. What am I gonna do next time? You know, like it's more like you know, what am I gonna do creatively? Not what bigger job? How much more money can I make or whatever? You know, it's like. Does it ever settle down for you? Do you like? Or is like, are you constantly thinking about that kind of thing? Like, what am I going to do next stream? Like, is it? I, I think it's good to not look down. Like, it's, I like to think of it as being on a ladder and constantly going up. And um, because if you look, if you go look down and go, oh, wow, I'm partner. Oh, wow, I have 12,000 followers. Oh, wow, I have this many views. Like, that to me is like looking down and trying to like, hold success but i think that it's good to like just look at the next rung and go i'm gonna do another show and then the next rung is just a show mm. it's just stream it's not doing a better show because <laughs> that would be too hard honestly i think i just have to look forward and go i'm going to stream again and then when i do it who knows what's going to happen it might be one where i'm tired and have to kind of pull back a little bit and just hang out with people and then people love that yeah i mean <laughs> to me i feel like I'm giving up you know yeah one um, one thing i've really learned is that having expectations of anything is like pretty much the route to unhappiness if you have expectations yeah. they're always going to be something not meeting your expectations and if you have those expectations you're not going to be happy so yeah oh. Just don't have expectations of how the way things are going to go, and maybe you'll be happy with it. Well, it's delicate. It's a delicate balance, I think, because it's like having no expectations is kind of impossible. Um, because it's kind of like saying don't. Th it's like if you're preoccupied with something, and you're like just don't think about it. But you're <laughs> by saying don't think about it, you think about it, and it's like. So I found that you just have to focus on checking the box of like if i do it i win <laughs> you 
you know, uh, if I do it, I'm successful and rewriting success in your brain. And, but in, in truth, success or a good stream is when I get this certain feeling when I'm streaming where I'm bouncy and people keep coming in and I'm meeting new people and I'm seeing old faces and there's lots of laughing happening in, in my, on my part, part in the audience. That's the best show to me is when I'm bouncing around on a show. The worst shows are when I'm barely hanging in, hanging in there and everything feels laborious. And I'm kind of like wanting to quit every step, you know, and sometimes those shows turn around and then I start to get bouncy again. And sometimes I just kind of push through. Maybe I'm a little hungover. Maybe there's some kind of reason I'm lacking energy or I just ate or some kind of thing. But I found that even those shows, when I'm kind of feeling more miserable, I still feel good about having streamed. Um, and I think that it means more to people than I can even understand oftentimes. And that's the whole mystery to me is like, this show means something to you that it doesn't mean to me. And that's just because we're different people and I'm the artist and you're the audience. And um, I try to respect that more. I try to grow in respect for the viewer's experience, even though I sort of dumb and blind to it. Um, and, uh, and um, oh yeah, no problem, Aaron. I'm glad to share. Um, no worries, Aaron. I'm a, I'm fine. I find it hard to write something logical in English. Sometimes I'm afraid it comes out rude or something. Not Julia. You're in good company. I'm, I'm not. You've never written anything where I'm just like, "What's your problem? What's that? Not Julia's problem." Like, say what you think. It's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um. Which is a place um, usually I've found of understanding, unless it's a really salty yeah. community. And it's taken me a while to trust it. You know, yeah, I think it's it okay to open up like to people as long as you're aware of the community that you're in isn't like something that's, you know, there are some communities that are just not really okay to open up with, but like those big ones, like you're talking about. But uh... yeah, and it's it's all about the voice of uh, that's in the center. I think of it because it's like if you have. Like I said, I mentioned the NASA uh, rockets. I mean, like, it's just talking heads, you know, and, and pictures of a rocket and switching cameras. And there's no personal owner of the moment. And people that are watching it are excited about the event and the action that's happening. But, you know, you get a DJ doing a set. There's going to be people enjoying the music. There's no conversation, really, but they're enjoying it. There's going to be a lot of weird jibber jabber but then you know you start to get to content where people are focusing on the chat a little more and then there's this opportunity and it doesn't scale very well so i don't know i mean i don't really spend a lot of time watching a lot of streamers because i don't have a lot of time but um you know i i would be i mean i, I see a graceful uh sensitivity and bounciness with you know kit boga he does well with 10 people 10,000 people watching like he'll do his thing and kind of notice comments here and there and he responds here and there and does what he can and and um he's graceful with it and um but i'm interested to see people that use twitch with maybe bigger audiences that are still sensitive somehow i don't really know how that works though because it seems like once you cross a certain threshold, there would just be too many people, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I got uncomfortable back in my gaming days, I would sort of just stop talking until people left. And then I was more comfortable talking again, you know? I just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was never really looking for like partnership. I was never really looking to get money out of Twitch. It was, I was just doing yeah. it because spending my afternoons gaming anyway and i was feeling like i wasn't yeah. being productive enough so but then i went from gaming to podcasting because of not just covid but i felt like i wasn't getting enough out of 
Like, I wanted to converse in my gaming streams, but I didn't want to converse with six people at once mm. in a chat about multiple different things. It takes it's, tremendous energy to keep bouncing around reading. I'm, and I don't think I'm actually very good at reading. Uh, I think I might have a partial dyslexia kind of thing because I, I, uh, I struggle with scripts and reading, trying to follow stuff. I do um, suffer from dyslexia just very mildly, but uh, I have an issue with yeah. it too. So, Yeah. Um, like we've been doing Borb's, uh, Borb's um, stroke count it's so i need to f automate that <laughs> it's so stressful to me the mods have been helping figure it out but like man it's so hard to comb through the things and be like all right who got the closest yeah um to the stroke stroke count but that, you said something funny about like trying to like what kind of tamp down your audience a little bit that's kind of a funny idea of like like if there were 10,000 people watching and it was just annoying. How could I get people to leave? <laughs> you know, like maybe I just switched to some kind of boring thing on purpose and everybody knows that it's to try to get people to lose interest. That would be funny. Yeah. 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 Um, zoom, in, zoom into the, the face of Borb and just have him like stare at the camera for a few minutes and just be like, yeah. I'm not moving until you do, you know? Or just literally show text from a book up here. <laughs> like a like a scanned book up here and people have to start you have to read this uh, before i'm going to come back on camera yeah yeah i'll wait till I, the average reading time is done for these two pages and then we'll we'll resume <laughs> sega dean said andy coffin did that that's awesome <laughs> uh, yeah coffin was great i mean such a mysterious and cre creative person I didn't explore Wish, Kaufman uh, until after Jim Carrey did that Man on the Moon. Yeah, well, same here. I mean, I didn't really know much about him. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating person. Yeah. Strange. En enigmatic. Um, he read a whole book on stage once. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I don't have the... I've always been a person that's been... It's been hard for me to let punchlines happen. Like, if I even learned a joke... Or like playing a prank on someone, I've never been able to really be like, you know, I I lost my job today. I'd be kind of like, just kidding. I I didn't. It's just a joke. I, I I the next part I was gonna say that blah 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 blah. Isn't that funny? Is it's a funny joke, right? You know. But I can't really let it sit if I'm just like you know, pranking people. Like I've never been. I I don't have the Kaufman. I can't just pretend that I'm not affected by people being like, Oh my God. Right. Like, uh, like that. It, it makes me feel horrible. Um, Aaron said, that's the hardest thing about magic. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that I mean, new game, uh, among us because it's too deceitful. I wouldn't play that with any of my friends, but I would play it with strangers only because it's, yeah. just, I don't want any deceit between me and my friends. Yeah. I, I don't want to be a liar. I don't care what it's. About. Yeah. I'm, my wife would attest I'm a horrible liar too, Aaron. Like I've tried to like. I don't I'm just too on people for that reason, Sam. I too I'm too obvious if I'm really trying, and I feel horrible doing it. Um, I I I part of my stream it, this my stream works because I it's easy for me to be genuine. So I'm just like I just go I'm try not to. I kind of feel like I'm getting further and further into being unaware that I'm doing streams when I do streams. <laughs> like it's when I do Borb, sometimes I'm like, holy crap, I'm streaming right now. Oh yeah. I almost forgot. You know, like if I cover up everything and I've got something, I'm looking for some information on something and I'm talking to you. Sometimes I'll forget that I'm streaming. I'm just like thinking that I'm looking for something and I'll, Go back to oh shit! I'm streaming. Uh, right. But it's it's always yeah. good fun though, like just to come back to it and whether whether or not you have a big audience or a small audience, it's always fun to come back to it and realize it. There's people talking to me over here. Yeah, there's there's people behind those those names. pieces of text, the names. 
from the people. Aaron, what's up? You're making some music for Kirk 10? Kirk 10? That's cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been great yeah. having you, Tom. I should let yeah. you go because I think I got to put my kids to bed soon. Um, okay. All right. Well, yeah, it was great talking with you, Val. I'll nice be meeting. around your streams and uh, we'll have lots of fun again sometime. Uh, do you have oh, anything you, you want to shout out? You were asking about URLs. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, when in doubt, everybody, just go to TomThinks.com. I mean, if you forget who I am or something, just remember Tom Thinks and you'll find me, you know, TomThinks.com. My website and stuff. Oh, I, I was drawing it. I didn't. I, I thought I was showing it, but I wasn't. But Tom thinks. Dot com. Uh, there, there we go. Uh, but anyways, um, didn't write it very well. But all right, thanks. Follow. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Good to see you. Thank you all for coming. Bye bye. I enjoyed your stay. Thank you, Tom, for being on my podcast. Yes, thank you, Tom. Thanks, follow. Nice meeting you too. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye.